make sure a couple of my assumptions uh, for this talk are good. Uh, is everyone here familiar with Java, specifically Java Web Development? Okay, the Java EE, that, that kind of stuff. We're good. All right. Um, what, what, uh, what I'm talking about here, uh, it's, it's entitled the Continuous Integration Development. Uh, what, what we're talking about mostly is testing, integration testing, um, various forms of testing, how that all plays into continuous deployment, continuous integration, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it is probably a slightly different uh, session from what you may have, uh, may have been to, uh, at least here today. Um, <clears throat> I, I liked a lot of user interaction um, feedback from the audience. Uh, if that's not the case, then we get to look at stuff that I'm interested in, which may or may not be interesting to you guys. So if you have a question, just feel free to ask uh, if you want to go in a slightly different direction, because I do have a lot of material here, um, a lot more material than I'll be able to cover in an hour. Um, so I'm going to be asking for direction from you as an audience as to where, where we want to go. So we'll start off with uh, testing, and the, the idea here is what what kind of testing do you all do in your applications? What kind of testing do we have out there? Unit testing. Okay, we've got unit testing. And what, what exactly does that mean? We're testing a unit. What's a unit? So a Java class or a Java object you set up, you want to make sure you didn't, for uh, parameter day, you always get parameter B back out. Okay. Doesn't blow things up when somebody else makes a change in another section of the code, or. All right, all right. Uh, there's also a a, um, a typical mm, let's call it a stereotype of unit tests that are slightly different from most other testing. What do you think that would be? Uh, aside from your, your you're testing smaller smaller pieces of your application. What? Uh, sorry. Talking about regression testing. Mm, well, we we can we can throw a regression testing on there. Um, what, what I'm looking for is uh, unit tests usually operate fairly quickly, right? They're not your big long tests that you run in the middle of the night from your CI server that take four hours to run, right? They're usually something that your developers run um, on check-in after you write a few lines of code, that, that kind of idea, you know, kind of spawn from the, uh, the test-driven development idea. So you're able to run these tests really quickly, get feedback really quickly, find out if things are broken or if things work. Uh, regression testing. Well, what do we usually do in, in regression testing? Is that something that your developers usually end up running? No. Who runs regression testing? QA. QA runs regression testing? Okay. Well, what are you typically looking for in your, in your Does it still tests? work? Okay. Uh, are those um, automated tests, manual tests, some of both? What, what do you guys think? Oh. Both. You get it um, automation makes it a whole lot easier, but there's certainly. Uh, certainly. Not too much manual, or nobody's going to do it. <laughs> no, that's the track. That's a hard thing to do. It was not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one, one of the places that I, that I worked in, our QA department, we, we were looking at um, automating a bunch of stuff, but almost all of it was still manual testing. And you go and you look at it, and you look at your test document, and you've got like 60 steps to go through and make sure that this, this kind of works. And of course, it's all manual testing, so maybe you forget step A or step 10 in a 20-step process, and you go, oh, well, it didn't work, or yeah, it worked fine. And you go back and go, oh, well, actually, I forgot to do this step. I think it invalidates everything. Well, what other types of testing do we, do we usually do? Smoke testing? Does it smoke install testing. and at least run? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, how does the smoke test differ from a unit test? Or does it? Well, smoke is usually the entire application. You install, install the entire app, great. Install the entire application or update that. You try to go end to end. Yeah. And see what happens. Probably yeah. nothing good. On a smoke test? Yeah. Smoke test. Okay. Yeah. See what's uh, up with I'll take that. that. That's usually not what I, I think of when I, when I think of smoke testing. But, you know, what do you think that. of when you think of um, when, when I think of smoke testing, uh, it's usually a smaller battery of tests that you end up running. It may be some of your integration tests, it may be some of your unit testing, maybe some functional testing, but stuff that runs really quickly. That yes, is, yeah. That's the first thing. Yeah, it just runs really yeah, fast, yeah. and you want to cover as much of your application as possible, yeah. but broadly, not deeply. Yeah. Broadly. yeah. And the, uh, the idea yeah, is, like, right, like, like it talks about, is that if something's smoking, then you've usually got a problem somewhere underneath. So that, that's the idea. You're running fast, 
they cover a lot of ground, but it's all very broad to make sure that things are still kind of up and running yeah. and kicking. Yeah. <clears throat> what else do we have? We do integration tests between our events here in our database. Integration testing. How many people honestly do integration testing? Wow, that is a lot more than what I, what I thought about. Um, what do you use for your integration tests? It's just like JUnit, except you don't write fixtures. You just call the stuff you want to run and run it that way. OK. A any particular um, frameworks or testing setups or whatnot that you use? JUnit. Okay. With edit. OK. All right. Anything from this side of the room? You know, <laughs> You're kind of quiet over here. Anyone over here doing integration testing? Uh, I would call it meat testing. Okay. Humans actually. UI just, testing? UI testing, just try to break it. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunately our environment. Now, I, I heard word functional testing. I would call it, you're talking about over here functional testing instead of integration testing. Functional testing, um, I, I usually think of as you, you want to go deep into your application and actually perform some, um, some function. The, the same way that your users would be doing. So I want to go in and I want to make sure that I can log into the system and that I see my home page, not Bob's home page when I log in. Um, I call that a functional test so that you're going through and you're doing the same kinds of things as what your users are, are typically doing. And any, any other kinds of testing that? Uh, service oriented availability testing. Is my service available? Or is my web page available? Okay. I guess that's more monitoring than testing. Um, availability testing? Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I'd also throw out the, the idea of a, of a load test as far as availability. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Load? Load. Oh, load, load. test. Yeah, yeah, load yeah. testing. Yeah, yeah, that's performance testing is another thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll kind of say it's in my yeah. um, Definitely making sure that uh, when when this brand new website that you throw out gets hit on, uh, gets tossed up on Slashdot that you can actually handle that, uh, yeah, that yeah. amount of traffic. Um, or if it's, um, say you've got uh, like a, an open API that you're doing, uh, maybe a RESTful API, maybe um, SOAP or something like that, and you just roll this new thing out and you've got iPhones and tablets and computers and mainframes and everything hitting this, this uh, API that you've got, you want to be able to make sure that you can actually scale yeah. up and, and do that kind of stuff. Anything else that anyone can talk about or think about as far as testing goes? Can you cover things like beta testing or acceptance testing? Some okay. of those different angles. Acceptance testing. Now, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming most of us here are developers. Is that a, is that a decent assumption? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we usually do a whole lot of acceptance testing? I know yeah. I haven't. But Right. Usually that's done by QA. Or in the absolute worst case scenario, your acceptance test is done by your users, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely the, the approach that we do not like to take. <laughs> you, you come up and go, oh, by the way, this is broken. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that's great. Um, I'll throw out a couple. Who's heard of this one? Black box? Um, black box, yes, not black box. Black box testing. Yep. What, what do you do there? And how is that different? Well, it's kind of a smoke test because you go ahead and on a component and see if the box burns up. You, we used to literally do that back in the old days when we had okay. yep. flight control systems for airplanes. You take the box out of the plane, <laughs> plug it in some stuff, and see if you got hot you want to burn. You know? Nice. Some inputs and make nice. sure the outputs correspond, <laughs> and it doesn't smoke. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how many of those boxes did you go through, and was was that like was that part of was that cost prohibitive? We had a warehouse full of them. So okay. Yeah. All right. So you, you were the manufacturer of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Um, Thank you. Now, the the one of the things about black box testing is that it's either something that I don't control, or it's something that has been well. It, it all boils down to I don't control it. I didn't write it. It's not in our warehouse. Um, we uh, we have a, just access to it, that kind of thing. So I, I can't actually see the internals of it. So you, you've got some inputs that you throw at it, and you expect these kinds of outputs, but I can't actually poke around the box and see what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. um, you see that a lot with uh, 
APIs that, that you consume over the internet. Um, for example, like a, a Facebook API. Sorry, I don't work for Facebook. I'm not there. I can't test it. I don't know what's going on. I hit the servers and I get back, hopefully, what I'm expecting to get back. Otherwise, we've got a problem. Uh, and to go with that one, uh, I'm going to throw this one out. We, we kind of we kind of coined this one uh, with the Arcalian project, which I'll talk about. And the idea is gray box testing. So the, it's it's something that you have a little bit of control over, but not full control. Um, maybe it's a, an API that you've written, or maybe it's a jar file that you've got, but you don't have source for it. But you can you can actually poke around at it. You can maybe decompile the source code. Um, you can look at it a little bit, but you don't have full control over the idea. Uh, and the, the mo mostly what uh, what we see when we're talking about gray box testing is a lot of uh, UI development testing. Um, so in, in Java land, something like uh, JSF, Wicket, um, Spring MVC, that, that kind of stuff. Um, selenium, wattage, water, um, all all of that kind of stuff. Let's see where, where do we want to go here. So we, we've covered some some of the ideas of testing. Now who's um, who's doing Java EE stuff? A few people. Okay. Now how are you testing your Java EE services? Are you testing your services? Yeah. How are you testing transactions? Uh, integration tests. With what? How do you run the integration tests? So we um, mock our database, and then we'll inject the exception to our exception back. OK, so you're, you're going to mock it. Yeah. OK, all right. And anyone else doing integration tests or functional tests that are not mocking? Most of ours are mocking, but we also do some where we'll do an actual insert, connect and whatnot to the database, and okay. do a rollback, make sure it actually rolled back, and that sort of thing. Do you test your stuff inside, this, inside of the server? Or is it all in like JUnit or TestNG? Most of it's test in TestNG. What if I told you that I can tell you how to test inside the same container you're going to be deploying against? Be helpful. Yeah. All right. That's what Arcalian does. Uh, Arcalian, uh, any, any Men in Black fans? Anyone seen Men in Black? <laughs> okay, so the, the idea, you remember the, uh, the Arcalian skin, the first Men in Black. That's kind of where the name came, comes from. Um, the idea of Arcalian is that I can take my tests, um, I can do micro deployments, I can do the full application deployment, but I can test the same code that I'm going to be running inside the server on the server. Not a mock, not a embedded container, not stubs, not, not any of this other stuff, but what I'm actually going to be running things on. That's that's where Arcalian is coming into in Linux, which is really helpful. Um, they're definitely not as fast as unit tests, but they're, you know, they're, they're fairly, fairly speedy. Uh, a little bit faster than what you find with most of your functional tests, um, maybe some of your integration tests. But it's uh, it's definitely there. Now what, what I've got, this is the Arcalian page, so arcalian.org. Uh, I don't know if you can see that up there. Maybe? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's arcalian.org. Uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, we have quite a bit of stuff on here. Go away. Um, most notably, we've got the guide section. Um, I, I did this talk down a couple of weeks ago down in Brazil, and we made a big to-do that it's actually localized. Uh, or at least one of them is in Portuguese. Um, but we've got all these different guides that are available on how to get started, how to do things uh, with Arcalian. Um, it doesn't cover everything that, that Arcalian has available to you, but there, there's actually quite a bit of information here. So what, what I've got here is I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, some of the tests that we have in our showcase, and hopefully you can see this bottom one. Okay, so what we've got here we've got CDI, EJBs, um, daemons, EJBs, JAXRS, JAXWS, JMS. Who's tested JMS before? Who's using JMS? I've used it, but I've tested it. Have you tested it? Are you mocking yeah. stuff? Mocking. Yeah. Yep. Um, JPA, um, so actually going and connecting to a database. Um, so we've got a, an extension over here. I have to say, is this bugging anyone else out here? <laughs> having the monitor go up and down? Um, JSF testing, multi node. So who, who's deploying their stuff out to a cluster? 
Would that be cool to be able to test whether or not you've got failover on your cluster? We can do that. Um, OSGI testing, servlet, UI, Spring, um, and something we're calling Warp. That's some of our, uh, our UI testing as well. Um, specifically focusing on JSF, but it'll do other stuff as well. So like I said, this, this one is open to you guys. Now I've got all the code up here. We'll walk through some of the stuff. Um, if you would like, I can run them as well, just to see if they do work. But where do you guys want to go? So we've got, you know, half hour. Let's do some code diving. Where do you want to go? JPA. So JPA and JSF would be helpful. Okay, so I, I heard some JSF. JPA and JSF. J, JPA and JSF. Okay. All right, I'm going to load this up in IntelliJ, because I like IntelliJ. Anyone else using IntelliJ? Eclipse users? NetBeans. NetBeans? Okay, don't run across that one as often, but I, I do I do hear it. I, I've kicked it around, but kind of, it's a decent ID. Um, okay, any anyone using um, anything specific from Red Hat or JLoss? Or is it just straight up Eclipse and then IntelliJ? Probably just straight up, okay. This, this is just straight up IntelliJ. Um, all of the, the code examples that I've got, they're all native based. Um, they all run right out of the box. They will download a, um, you know, some of them target some servers. They will all work on JLoss application server seven. Um, many of them have Glassfish adapters as well, so you can run them in Glassfish. Uh, as far as our killing goes, we support Tomcat, Tommy, JLoss four, five, six, seven, Glassfish, Three, um, resin, WebSphere, WebLogic, um, Jetty, Tomcat, pretty pretty much anything you'd be deploying your, your Java stuff on, we we can support and level. Now, as for the uh, the JPA stuff, I heard JPA first. Um, do we want to actually see data in the database, or just actually do some JPA stuff? I'm guessing you probably want to see some data in the database. Okay. Uh, I like the little red things. Um, if anyone was here for my first talk, I updated my system last night, which was a really bad idea. <laughs> and it kind of screwed a few things over. So we'll, we'll see see what works and what doesn't work as far as the IDE goes. Um, tests. Here we go. Okay, so just... Uh, Nothing really special here. This is a, a typical JPA entity. So we're annotated with the entity annotation. Um, we've got an ID, a title. Hitter setters. Um, down below you'll see uh, equals, hash code, two string. Oh, no equals, no hash code. Okay, but two strings there. So not, nothing all that special on there. But this one, so here, here's our test. Now, a couple of things um, to take note of. Right here, um, this run with annotation, this is a JUnit test. This is JUnit 4. Um, what we're telling here is we want JUnit to pass uh, running the test and everything over to our Killian right there. And then we've got this deployment static method right here, which creates a Java archive. Now, th this is, this is kind of interesting. This is another project that we've got going on. Um, if you were if you were to do regular testing, um, just just a regular Java test, and you wanted to deploy that out of the server, what, what do you usually have to do to actually get something in the server? Have the server running, you need to uh, go about deploying it. Right. Yep. So you've got to build a, a war, a jar in here, something like that, and actually physically put that in the server, right? What uh, what this is? This is the Shrinkwrap project. And its sole purpose is to create those archives for you in Java code. So we don't have to run through a build. We don't have to do a maven build to do any of this. We don't have to do an ant build. This is all inside of our test. We're going to create a new jar, um, add in anything that is in the same package as the game class. We're going to add a persistence XML file, and that's going to be it for us. Find JPA JPA. That's not the one I want to look at. I want a good persistence. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, 
same idea, it's still using game class. Um, looks like I've got some stuff that hasn't downloaded, whatever. Um, okay, so at our package, um, we've got some fest assertions here. Um, they're like hand pressed uh, if you're using JNF4. Same, same kind of idea. Um, Beans XML, we're doing some CDI stuff on here, persistence XML. Uh, you'll notice we've got a, an entity manager that we're injecting into the persistence context here. And then we've got some, uh, some stuff that we're doing here with uh, tests, sequencing, transactions, um, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing here, um, obviously this is a test method, it's a JVM test. Um, and in sequence, so who's um, who's had the fun time of actually spanning multiple um, Java SE versions and running tests? Anyone? Go from Java 6 to Java 7. Anyone do that one? Yeah. What did you notice about your JUnit tests? Uh, they don't run in the same order. Yes. Yes. Um, it changed in Java SE 7. The the internals in JVM, they changed it. So your tests do not run in the same order they did in SE6. Which can be good, can be bad, depending on how you're expecting things. Uh, one, one of the, uh, the issues with um, persistent stuff specifically, the, the problem you've got with persistence is do I do an insert on every test, test that, um, roll it out of the database, delete it, what, do I do that every test, or do I do that once a suite? How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> you know, and if, if your tests aren't in, in a predictable order, then you're really screwed. You end up doing delete before you've done an insert, or before you do a read, and you're like, no, it is not there, don't know, test valid. And you sit there and you scratch your head for a really long time going, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it happened to me. Um, so what we've got here, the in-sequence test, this is an Archelian, uh extension to Jamin. Uh, where we're actually going to tell Archelian the order that we want our tests to run in. So that, that gives you that capability back if you're using JVM. Um, if you're using TestNG, that stuff's already in there for you. Um, uh, what are we doing here? Um, where are our tests? Our data. We've got data. At least we should have data. There we go. All right. Um, so th this one, I I'll go back up. Uh, this annotation over here, the should match data set, and we've got a YAML file over here. Uh, it's, you know, it's similar to JSON. <coughs> what, what we're using uh, internally, has anyone used DBUnit before? No? OK. What DBUnit does is it takes, uh, by default, an XML file and seeds your database using, using that information, and then when you're done with the test or the suite, however you set it up, it kicks all that data out and gives you a, a fresh new data, uh, data set that you're using. Um, what we're doing here is we're doing a YAML file. It's really nice and easy to read. If you looked at the, uh, the DB unit stuff, it's a really, really nasty, horrible XML format that's hard to use, hard to understand. Uh, the YAML file is really simple. So uh, we, we've got a bunch of games that we're adding. We've got three games, um, title, years released, and the price. Um, those correspond to the, the actual uh, fields on the, the game entity. So not, nothing all that difficult to understand on that one. So our killing is going to see that. It's going to take it, load it up in, in our database, and actually run, run through it. Uh, but looking at one that we had before, um, this one is going to actually add, add the data programmatically that, that we want to do. So we're going to make sure that we actually wrote all this stuff correctly. And then when we're done, so we're, we're saying this is transactional, but when we're done with the, the test, we actually want to roll that back because we don't want to keep that data around in, in our database. Um, like I said, there's, there's nothing really special here, so we add, add two games. Um, Make sure they're in the database for system flushing. Um, yeah. Not terribly um, exciting on that one. Just make sure they're in, in the database and roll back. <coughs> so that, that's all of um, 
Who, who's doing something similar with, with their, their, their data stuff? So you're, you're going in and you're actually seeing stuff manually in your tests. Yeah. So you're, you're used to seeing some of this boilerplate code, right? Yeah. And this one that's using our data set, um, you'll notice, one, doesn't have any of that stuff, and two, is a lot easier to, to read what's going on. I don't have to go through and read all that boilerplate stuff that should actually be gone in either a base class or something else anyway. I don't care about it. So we, we've, got our, we've got our PC games that we've got. Um, if you remember looking at that YAML file, we've got Arkham Asylum, Baldur's Gate, um, and we go and load all of those up, and then this one right here, we're going to say, make sure that those are actually correct. Otherwise, it'll throw, throw an exception and we'll be able to see what's going on with that. Maybe we, we screwed up our, um, our platform logic over here for adding and adding games. Maybe we forgot to persist or flush or something. Um, but in our killing will come back and say, hey, the stuff in the database isn't matching the data set you said that it should match. So you've got that. Um, like I said, really great and useful for actually adding stuff in, in the database. Um, some other test cases that we've got. Uh, okay, yeah, here, here's one that, that actually starts off. So up, up at the top, you'll notice we've got uh, some injection happening. This is a CDI injection. Now one, one of the neat things to think about, this, this is actually a JUnit test. A JUnit doesn't give you um, injection out of the box. It's something you've got to add. You've got to mock it. Um, you have to have some sort of private method or something like that to add all, all that stuff in there. Arcalian gives us the ability to inject stuff straight up, which is really handy. Uh, the game repository, this is, um, do you want to look at it? It's a DAO class. You want me to pull it up? Okay. I'll take a look real quick. So we're injecting a persistence context um, from Java EE land. Fetch all, fetch for a platform, um, get a platform. Like I said, it's a DAO class, nothing, nothing really special. Um, you will notice if you take a look real quick that we're using the uh, Criteria API from JPA2. Um, it helps out with refactoring and whatnot, so you don't have to go and manually find all of those strings everywhere. But that's helpful. <coughs> Back to the test. This one? Yep. So we're injecting one of those. Um, and because we're, we're injecting it and we are running inside of a container, so we're, we're actually going to go and deploy this to one of our servers. Um, that'll start up and it'll have all those services available to us that we have in our application. This will already be pre-wired for us and everything. All the injections will happen. We can verify that in, in our test. Um, all all that, that kind of good stuff. So the same programming model that you're used to using while you're building your application, you can use while you're testing as well. So you don't have to have, okay, now, now I'm testing. Now, now I've got to remember, we've got to write this mock and I've got to call these methods here and make sure everything gets injected. You know, don't have to worry about that. It's all done for you via the container. <coughs> Um, fetch all of our games, make sure that we've got three of them. Um, that was from that game channel file that we saw. Um, the using data set, this is very similar to the, the other one, but this is just loading up the data inside that data set. I'm not going to verify it when we're done, we just want to load it. And then when we're done with our test, it will roll, roll everything back and have the database. Uh, in this one, we're going to load up a, a couple of different data sets. So games, platforms. Um, platforms, if I remember right, has three or four uh, different platforms inside of it. Yeah. So we've got a PS3, PC, a Wii, and an Xbox 360, and it's a uh, it's got a many of many relationship. Uh, we've got our, our game platform cable here. That's you know it's just your mapping cable between your many many nothing too special there. <coughs> and back in test. So we've got all of that stuff. Using the game repository that, that we're injecting up here, we're going to do a fetch all and make sure that we've got all the games in there. That, that all works out the way that we expect it to. Um, same kind of stuff here. Um, Xbox 360, PC. Um, just making sure that I'm a fan 
line guy. I like doing stuff on the command line. It works inside the uh, inside the IDE as well, which is a nice thing. Um, I just like doing the same kind of thing that you're going to be doing on your server or your continuous integration environment on your box. I, that's just me. I know lots of people like staying in their IDE, which is fine. Um, but I like making sure that I'm as close as possible to what I'm going to be deploying on when, when I'm developing. Uh, so what, uh, what we're doing here, this is Maven going through cleaning up all the stuff, building stuff, and this is all the stuff that's going on inside JBoss Application Server. So we actually started on a server, um, deployed the, our little test, test class that, that we built using Shrinkwrap up here. Uh, so that, that'll include anything in, in the, the package for the game, the test stuff. Now th this, this one's actually important. Um, because the test is running on the server itself, any, any extra testing stuff that you're doing, like in this one, FEST, or if you're using some extra hand press matchers or something for uh, JEMIT, you've got to make sure that those are actually packaged up inside your jar or your war that you're sending over to your server. Otherwise, it'll blow up with the class not found exception. Uh, beans XML for CDI, persistence. And then you can see over here, it, it may have been actually had colorized output. <laughs> We'd see this, this, this would be all green. So we, we ran seven tests, and they all succeed successfully. Build succeeded, and we've got all of our stuff in, inside the target directory. All the kind of stuff that you're, that you're used to seeing is all in there. Uh, I, I did a verify, so I've actually got a package of the, uh, the project here. Um, we actually downloaded JBoss AS7 from a Maven repository. Uh, it's actually out there in Central. So we did that, unpackaged it, told Arcalion where it's at, and had Arcalion started up for us. Um, servers in Arcalion are either remote or they're managed. Um, remote can be on a separate box, a separate VM, um, any of that kind of stuff managed. Uh, also runs in a separate VM, but we're going to let Arcalion manage it for us, so it'll start it up, it'll destroy it, it'll tear it down, all that kind of stuff. Whereas remote may or may, may not already be started already. If it's not started, then you're going to have to go start it manually. And that kind of stuff. So there's, there's persistence. Do we have questions? Because I know someone wanted to see the JSF stuff. And I've got... Uh, Can you show us the Arcalion configuration? Yep. And is there a GUI for Arcalion to manage the configuration and the running That's your configuration. It's um, it's an XML file. We've got an XSD for it, so you can you can see stuff. Um, there is no tooling for it yet, um, other than just the, the XSD. But there's really not a whole lot here. So we, we've got a container here. Now in, in that multi-node one, you can actually set up multiple uh, containers to run against. Um, and then we're telling it we're using the persistence ex extension over here, and we got some properties to set. But that's it. I mean, there, there really isn't a whole lot of uh, setup or configuration that you have to do throughout Arcalion. It's all actually pretty boilerplate. You find one, you copy it, you basically use it. That kind of stuff. Other questions? Or shall we move on to JSF? Alright, I'm going to pick that as a move on to JSF. Uh, the JSF one works. I'm going to show you work though. Um, work, I think, is much more interesting. Who's using Selenium? One person? Two? How are you using it? Are you, are you building up page classes to um, kind of mirror what's on a page, or are you just using the straight up API? What do you guys use? Starting, just getting started with straight up API, but pushing towards page classes. Okay, what about you guys? I don't know, I'm not one of Okay, our companies. <laughs> Got it. Fair enough. <clears throat> Okay, so this is using LibDriver and uh, Selenium. You wrapped it, make it a little bit more friendly. Um, if you're just starting with the API, you'll notice that the API isn't the friendliest, friendliest thing in the world. <laughs> it, uh, it does require a little bit of tweaking and whatnot. Um, so Warp and this other extension called Drone 
Um, Jerome is our abstraction around the web driver stuff. Um, as, as you'll notice, we don't actually set up any of the, the web driver stuff. Our killing does all of that for us, which is handy. Um, we've got a deployment, and we've also got one of these things, this Archelian resource. Um, what, what this is going to do is it's actually going to give us the URL for our deployed application, so you don't have to guess it, you don't have to hard code it, any of that stuff, it'll, it'll give it to us. Um, inside of our deployment that we're building up, we're going to build a war file. We've got a war file right here, um, adding a few classes, resources, so we're going to add uh, a couple of XHTML pages, which are our uh, JSF frontends. Faces config, means XML, or CDI. And then we've got this one over here. This one's pretty cool. So th this is a web XML that we're building up programmatically using a, uh, a Fluent API, which is kind of cool. Um, so we've, we've got a new web XML that, that we're starting up. Um, we've got a, a context parameter that is the project stage for JSF2. We're going to tell it we're in development mode, and then we're going to export all of that as a string, and that'll actually give us a full-blown web XML. Uh, we've got information for web XML, uh, beans XML, uh, faces config, uh, data sources, pretty, pretty much all of your XML files that, that you usually end up creating anyway. You can do that all programmatically using a Fluent API, which is really helpful. Um, th this annotation over here, uh, instead of running our test on the server, you're saying, package this up, send it over to the server, and then come back and run this as a client. Um, so instead of running that on the server, it's, it's going to be in the same um, thread, same VM as what your, um, your tests are running. So it's, it's a client as opposed to something you run on the server. Um, so what we're going to do, we come in here, we've got this warp, um, initialization that we're doing. So we're going to tell the browser to go to our page, so the context path of the application, go to the submit JSF page, then we're going to run this verify initial state, which is a, it's a class we've got here inside the test um, that does a few things for us over here. Um, <coughs> So it, it extends the, the um, inspection based class and runs uh, run, runs our test that we've got, got in here. We're going to inject a, a conference. And what, what we're doing here, we're going to verify that we're actually on the page that we expect to be. Uh, and other, this, this is kind of where, where that gray box idea is coming from. So we're running as a client, but we can also pull in the the JSF um, faces context, so you can take a look and see what's going on inside JSF, as well as just on, on plane, just what's going on in the browser. Um, we're actually going to run this test after the render response phase, so you've got access to all of your JSF um, lifecycle that you can take a look at. And because this is the first time reviewing the page, we want to make sure that all of the um, information inside that, uh, that conference that's uh, on the uh, the server side. Well, I'm going to that's all empty, basically. It's all empty string. And the same, same idea in JSF. Um, but how, how horrible would that be to hit that first page and you've actually got stuff filled out? Um, this client, initiate. Okay. So we've already verified that we're on the page that we want to be. It's all blanked out like we expect it to be. Now we want to go and. Um, uh, this, to, to you that are doing the uh, Selenium API stuff. This is a little bit easier than what Selenium did you. So we're going to tell the browser we want to find an element by its ID instead of trying to go look it up via like CSS selector or XPath. Um, actually go look up the idea, the ID of the, the input. And then we're actually going to send the keys. Now this, this, one's, this one's nice. You, you could just set the value on there, but we're actually doing send keys which will simulate the, the key presses that you get in the browser. So if you've got something else going on uh, on a key press in, in your JavaScript, this will trigger that as well. So you, you've got the same kind of interaction <coughs> as what you had on the, uh, the user entering the stuff in. We're going to set all this stuff. Uh, this was done a while ago. Uh, you can see 2010 at DevOps um, in Antwerp. So set all that stuff. Then we're going to do another uh, verifying. 
going to verify this mission, um, which looks very similar to the first one we looked at. Um, after we run the response, we're going to make sure that the stuff that we typed in actually came back on our server and got what we're expecting to receive. Uh, so they make sure the string is all correct. I don't know why IntelliJ is not liking this, but whatever. Um, make sure that the dates are correct. We're getting stuff back as strings from for what we're expecting. And make sure that we're on the submission site. So after, after we pull it all in, we get submit. Then we want to make sure that we, we actually did that round trip on the server, and we're coming back to where, where we expect to be. Uh, and after that's all done, um, we're going to make sure that the, the new page that we're at, we've got the correct title, and we've also got the same um, information inside our um, our title as as what as what we just submitted in here. Uh, that, that's what warp looks like using using that with drone. You can also use drone with um, JAXRS or JAXWS kind of stuff. You can do that. Um, right now, Warp is, uh, it started actually through one of our internal uh, QA guys at Red Hat uh, testing uh, bridge faces, and they, they needed an easier way to do that. So it's focused, or started at least with JSF, and then we're starting to branch out into some other um, UI uses. Uh, but it's definitely something that's fairly easy to use. Uh, it's a little bit more terse, a little bit easier to read than, say, the Selenium API. Um, you don't have to build up nearly as many uh, page classes as what, what you'll end up doing. Um, what, what you'll find is any page, any page that you end up testing, you'll have to go and actually write a Java representation of that page, go do all that stuff. Uh, so you'll have, um, you'll easily have probably about as much test code as you do production code, um, it, it may vary. Um, but you'll end up having a lot of test code that you have to maintain to get all that Selenium stuff working. Uh, this is a little bit easier. It's nice, it's easy to read. Uh, it's fairly intuitive. Um, that's all there. Questions? Anyone, anyone? anyone? Okay. Um, I can probably run through one of them really quick. One other one. Um, any of these really jumping out at you? So you're interested in the Sorry? Spring? The Spring stuff? Now, I have to start off with the caveat, I'm not a Spring developer. I have not used Spring. Um, so some of what I may say is how Spring works may not be correct. My apologies. Um, there's actually quite a bit of stuff here in Spring. Um, so I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we've got EJBs, Hibernate, uh, Spring Injection, Java Config, JVC, JMS, JPA, uh, JSR 3.30, which is the uh, the inject annotation stuff, so some of your Spring 3.0 stuff, and Spring Test and G. Hibernate. Hibernate. Equals, yeah. 
all that kind of stuff. Um, nothing special, but we do have some spring integration as well um, that may or may not be helpful to you based on how you're testing your spring application. Um, but it's all there. Like I said, all, all this stuff is actually up on GitHub. Um, let's see if I can pull it up. Here on, on GitHub, you can take a look, pull it all down. Uh, that's what I did. I, I just cloned the repo locally. So you've got all this stuff here. Like I said, some of this is kind of old, some of it's a little bit newer. Um, looks like the, the last last one was four months ago on Master. I think there's another branch that's got some more current stuff on. Um, the, the universe stuff is a little bit more current, a couple of months. Um, but I don't think some of the stuff in the universe is quite ready for prime time. So you, you may have some um, some stuff blow up on that one. But for sure, the, everything in, in the universe works. Uh, and like you saw before in some, some of the tests, maybe, maybe you saw the, the resources. Some of them focus solely on JBoss AS. Some of them have Archeal or um, Glassfish adapters to them. Some of them will work on Tomcat, all that kind of stuff. But definitely, if you're, if you're interested, and simplifying some of your testing and getting some of your continuous integration and, and deployment done <clears throat> using stuff that's automated, definitely take a look at, at our team. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> I do think I've got a little bit of time, maybe. Uh, just one final call for questions, if anyone's got questions. If not, I'm here today, I'm here tomorrow. Um, I don't have any talks that I'm doing tomorrow, so I'll probably just be sitting out somewhere. If you're interested, come talk to me. Um, come see me. Um, you can follow me on Twitter uh, if you're interested. That's my Twitter handle. Um, I check it fairly regularly. Um, but yeah, if, if you're interested in, or have a question that comes up later, hit me, hit me up on Twitter, and we'll get you taken care of.